leadership that's coming is something that that you're going to be a just rocked because it's a vision of faith that has been brought into this house that's going to manifest today. Yes, I am excited too. So we're going to be, I'm not even sure, Patty, if you could bring that up. Oh, I got my sticky notes in my pocket. Every good pastor has his sticky notes, right? Let's see. Oh, right, there's that one. I got to make sure I get it right. Okay, there's that one. Okay. Oh, okay, so I'm going to start in Luke. I'm not even going to use my, my earpiece. I'm just going to do it with a microphone today. So, let's see. Scott? Where's Scott? There you are. Oh, good. You going to get some coffee or something? Okay, get some water, and then I'm going to have you come up, and I'm going to give you the mic, and you're going to read. Okay? So you take your time, because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share something. I'm stalling for time, so take your time, Scott. So who, who all's watched Princess Bride? Woo! One of my favorite shows. I love it. There's so much good stuff in there. Well, see, there's Inigo Montoya. Oh, he's my man. You killed my father. Prepare to die. Okay? So, Scott, if you could go over and grab that microphone, we're going to activate that one, Brian, eventually. And then you can just sit with your wife back there in the shadows. And back to the shadow, to the shadow <laughs> of his wings that we have in here. It's the shadow of his wings. That's right. So, um... Inigo Matoya is hanging out with Vicini and Andre the Giant, and they're doing this thing, and all of a sudden, bam, everything comes apart, and the wheels come off the wagon, and, and they come into the, the forest is the scene, and, and uh, Inigo is sitting there inebriated, and, he's, and they're clearing out the forest for the king, and one of the, guys, the bruisers comes through, and he says, and here's Inigo Montoya sitting there, kind of inebriated up against this wheel next to a little shed. He goes, I'm waiting for you, Vincini. You told me to go back to the beginning. This is where I am. I will not be moved. When the job went wrong, you went back to the beginning. And I am staying until Vincini comes. I am waiting for Vincini. That's no different than us and God. When the wheels come off the wagon, we go back to the beginning because that's where faith first came. And we have to believe in that initial faith. And if you remember that scene, he gets out of his sword, he chases away the one guy until Andre the giant comes in and grabs him. And he says, you don't look so good. And then he goes, and then the scene, or, you know, and Nigo goes, Pugh. he goes, you don't smell too good either. <laughs> and see, that's the beauty of our God when he comes back and, and, and Andre in that moment speaks exactly what God is in the midst of us. You don't look too good. You don't smell too good either. But see, he comes when the wheels have fallen off and we've gone back to our original only thing we got is faith. So, with all that we've done so far, the name of this message, if I'm going to put a name to it, is I'm going fishing. I'm going fishing. All right. So, Scott, if you could go ahead and read the stuff up on the screen. Now it happened that while the crowd was pressing around him and listening to the word of God, he was standing by the lake of Genesaret. He was standing by the lake of Genesaret. Close enough. And he saw two boats lying at the edge of the lake, but the fishermen had gotten out of them and were washing their nets. And he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little way from the land. And he sat down and began teaching the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered and said, Master, we worked hard all night and caught nothing, but I will do as you say and let down the nets. When they had done this, they enclosed a great quantity of fish and their nets began to break. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat for them to come and help them. And they came and filled both of the boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw that, he fell down at Jesus' feet, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I 
am a sinful man, for amazement had seized him and all his companions because of the catch of fish which they had taken. And so also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not fear, from now on you will be catching men. When they had brought their boats to land, they left everything and followed him. Okay. Thank you, Scott. You have a beautiful voice. Number one, partnership. You see that right from the beginning. You see Jesus speaking into that. That's where he met them. That's where the beginning, we're going back to the beginning. I want you to see this moment. And because of the multitude, they had to get their partners to help them bring in the net. And then revelation hit and Peter falls down at his feet. And you can see James and John, you know, the sons of Zebedee, were there partnering with him in the midst of that. Now I want you to remember, that's the beginning of this. Let's fast forward three years. The boys, the 12, plus all the others have been walking with Jesus. They had an understanding. They believed a certain thing. That God was going to do something. They were pressing into that. And, and suddenly, what they were thought, what they thought was going to happen, went sideways when Jesus says, I am done. It is finished. I am gone. Doop. He dies. He's resurrected. All three years they'd lived with this vision. They followed Jesus. They watched. And, and so many times it's like they didn't have a clue. And Jesus told them so. Ye of little faith, how long do I have to struggle with you boys? Because sometimes we don't know ourselves. So three and a half years. Let's go to John 21, if you would, please, Tracy. And after these things, Jesus manifested himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And he manifested himself in this way. In this way. Simon Peter Thomas called Demius, I guess, close enough, and Nathaniel, Nathaniel of Cana, and Galilee, and the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. I've been sitting on my butt. I am not seeing anything change. I'm going back to the beginning. I'm going back fishing. And they said to him, da -da, we will also come with you. So he's like, uh, he's the ringleader. I'm going fishing. They're going, we're with you, dude. They went out and got into the boat. Now, after three years, he didn't sell the boats. Still something was going on in the background. Peter and the boys went back to the boats. Is that wrong? No. They're learning about themselves. They'd taken their faith and they believed it as far as they knew what to do with it. Everything they thought was going to be there had not shown up. I don't think they were too happy. I think they may have been delusioned, disillusioned, despondent. And they went out and got into the boat and that night they caught nothing. Absolutely nothing. But when the day was now breaking, Jesus stood on the beach. Now the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. See, they were so disconnected from the reality of their vision, they didn't even know who that person was. So Jesus said to them, children, you do not have any fish, do you? You ever had Jesus? I mean, he, there's a little bit of inflection in there. Children! I mean, come on. This is, as a grown man, you call me. All right, dude, who are you and why you call me a children? I ain't your child. I mean, that's like a poke in the ribs. Ah, children, you don't have any fish, do you? They answered him, no. And he said to them, cast the net on the right side of the boat and you will find a catch. So they cast it. And then they were not able to haul it in because of the great number of fish. <gasps> Going back to the beginning. Remember? See, 
He's reminding them of who he is and in the midst of them who he is. The first time you met me and you fell at my feet, you had a load you couldn't bring in yourself. Therefore, the disciples whom Jesus, the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it's the Lord. Peter is still clueless. I'm going fishing. And here, here he's like, it's the Lord. So when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put his outer garment on, for he was stripped for work. See, there's times when we strip ourselves to go back to our old way, to go back to that lower level of faith. We take out that garment, that robe of righteousness. We take off that garment of faith. We take off the garment of belief. We take it off and we set it aside because at that moment in our belief system, it wasn't working because I got to go back fishing. And he put it back on. He threw himself into the sea, but the other disciples came in the little boat. Why? Because they had lack of faith? No, because they had a load of fish to bring in. See, God, I want you to remember, there's a load of fish there for you. There is provision. It may not be visible at the moment. Is it my job or your job to make it happen? No. We're just walking. But the other disciples came in the little boat, for they were not far from the land, but about 100 yards away. I think that's interesting. This is a 100-yard dash in the Spirit. And Peter's doing it because he can't walk on the water. He's swimming. I mean, I would have loved to have seen Peter jump out of the boat like he did the first time in faith and run across the waves like they do in the shack. That didn't happen this time. So he got to swim. Big deal. Dragging the net full of fish, that little boat was coming in. So when they got out, of the, out on the land, they saw a charcoal fire already laid and fish placed on it and bread. And Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish which you have now caught. Now. Say now. 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 Say it again. Come on. Now. Now. There you go. Good job, Scott. See, there is when you step away and you set aside the garments and the belief and the vision, God has a new now for you to catch. You may have lost your vision, but the vision's still alive. It may be augmented. It may be a little bit clearer focused or maybe completely, absolutely different. Because you look at Mary coming out down to the garden and the tomb, and she's looking for Jesus' broken body. And who's she meet? Jesus. She's like, where did they put his body? Where'd you put him? She's talking to Jesus saying, where'd you put his body? You know, I'm sure Jesus is going, Mary, boom, the lights come on. All right? Sometimes we can't even see the now provision. It changes a little bit. It moves a little bit out of where we thought it was. And it's verse 11 says, Simon Peter went up and drew the net to land, full of large fish, 153, and although there were so many, his net was not torn. See, the now provision looks nothing like what they had when they before Christ left before the transformation but the net didn't break with that many fish on a little bitty boat it didn't sink the net didn't break they got it to land and Peter goes out there and hauls it in with the boys he's back in the game he's back in the game verse 12 says Jesus said to them come and have some breakfast none of the disciples ventured to question him who are you, knowing that it was the Lord? See, I like that. They knew it. Jesus didn't have to go have a big flash of neon sign. They knew by the actions of the provision in a different way than they'd ever expected that it was God. So when they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon, Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more? That's all, and that's all so I'm going to, far, far as I'm going to take it. Do you love me more? 
See, when we, we did this expansion, it took almost two years. And as Marcus said, Mike, what do you see? Because Marcus and I have been together more than half of our lifetime together. And he, he le- has learned me, and I've learned myself, and I've learned Marcus. And he knows enough to ask me questions, to help me see. And see, I had, I had when I saw this, and, I, and we did the plans and things, the original plans aren't like what we have now, but that's okay because they changed in the midst. And, and what I want to I just really highlight for you is that a vision comes into clearer focus very often because we learn about ourselves. And if we never take that step of faith, okay, we won't learn who we have the potential to be. If Jesse and Sarah had never stepped out of their little place where they were normally walking, they'd never step into learning how to sing better or learning and, and, and polishing the ability to be an interior decorator. As many times as I was told that I was not something, God's word behind me, because he's behind me, speaking me, this is the way to go, walking it, kept me going. See, sometimes we have to get the one vision that we had and let it die and be resurrected to a higher calling. See, Peter, James, and John, and the boys, they went back to the old vision. They were setting themselves in a place where Jesus could come and set them into a higher calling again. Yeah, I called you to be fishers of men back there. You went back to fishing. I'm coming back to remind you what I said. Remember. See, the end of uh, You've Got Mail, there's that song, Remember. You ever heard that song? Check it out sometime. See, sometimes we have to remember what he said because situations speak so much different. They reverted back to what they knew because they felt inadequate. Ooh, ow. And I know you all in this room don't feel that way because your identity in Christ is rock solid. I know mine's not. (laughs) They felt inadequate, discouraged, delusioned, disillusioned, and unworthy. See, when when Jeannie was sharing, you know, all these things spoke into her life, and she didn't feel valued. She felt unworthy. And, And we all heard that. And every one of the testimonies this morning, you've heard about learning about yourself. Mm. God invested everything into our relationship. I want you to think about that. I want you to really think about that. Scott, I want you to read again what it says up there, verse 15 on down. I want you to read that. So when they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, tend my lambs. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, shepherd my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. There you go. Thank you, Scott. See, This is over a breakfast conversation. There's an innocence there, a safety place there. And Jesus was prodding to see if Peter knew and understood about himself and his love. And and I like the part where it says he was grieved. Because there's a in the conversation of life, suddenly revelation hits you and you're and it grieves you 
of what you believed and where you were and all those things. And it really takes you down to foundation bottom. You know that I love you. You know that I love you. And see, out of that love, it's, it's, that love is not for self, it's to give. And, you're, and I'm going to say this loudly because I have to say it to myself. When we built this and had all this happen and Corona happened, uh, Jesus and I had a conversation, Holy Spirit and I had a conversation, and Father and I had a conversation. Because I see who's here. I see how finances work here. And I, and I went to the Lord and I said to Jesus, I said, Jesus, you and I have walked this out. And if the finances aren't here to do this, what do I do? How do I, how do I get to the next place. And in the conversation, Jesus said, is your identity and your value wrapped up in a building in this place? And I had to really think about it. I went, no, it's not. Because I can go out in the middle of a field and share with my family. That's not my, that, this is just a box. And he said, what about all the work and all the money you've put into that? Because he was prodding me at that point. What about all the work you've put into this, the sweat and all the stuff you you and your wife and all those that have loved you and have invested in this house, just make it like it is. What if it all goes away? And I had to think about that one. I'm like, how am I going to stand before my family that have had faith with me and in my vision if this all went away? And I know I went to Holy Spirit on this one because this was I'm like, uh, can I get a lifeline? <laughs> Holy Spirit, what's the answer to this? Holy Spirit says, if you, if this goes away, you have built a beautiful place for someone to step into to take it to where they're supposed to take it. I went, oh, so I'm investing in someone else's vision that you have already had plans and you've been moving them and they are stepping into a blessing that you had me build for them build houses for someone else i get that it wasn't it wasn't fun in the guts you know in here but see i know my dad well enough that even if it's not i'm blessing somebody else see does that make sense but we're still here, thank God, for whatever. But in, if we're not here, praise God. He's got something else he's figured out because his vision's better than mine. That's why I wear glasses. Mm. You know that I love you. See, that's the bottom line. It's not the stuff. It's not the things we do. It's our love. And if he asked me to go out there and stand on the roof, I'll stand on the roof. If he asked me to go sit in a boat, I'll go sit in a boat. He will do the same for us, every one of us. He's going to take us to a place where we're in conversation. Your calling and vision has not lo was not lost. Oh, your calling and vision has not lost hope. Ooh, I guess see this. This is good. Your calling. And vision has not lost hope, even if you have. Come on. Yeah. Come, on. Come on. Because your vision was God-inspired to start with. It doesn't die, even if you lose hope in it. It's not yours anyhow. It's God's vision. And if he chooses to move things around on the table, so be it. A new step. It's called to a new step. Get back to your calling. Go back to the, word, the beginning. Like Inigo Montoya. I'm back at the beginning. Vincini, where are you? God, where are you? 
I don't see you. <laughs> I don't see you. I don't smell you. I don't feel you. Where are you? I'm right there in the midst of you. What's holding you back? Are you fishing on the wrong side of the boat? We fished all night. Nobody here. Empty nets. I'm sure there's a country song about that somewhere. <laughs> Jesus will restore. Jesus will restore. Just don't carry shame. Don't carry shame. Carry his name God invested everything in this relationship we only have to engage in it to reap the full benefits provided in our reconciliation I'm going to say that again God the three of them invested everything into a relationship with us Everything. All we have to do is engage in it. Engaging? Step. Step into it. Step into it. And then you will reap the full benefits of what God has done in your life. The full benefits. Say full benefits. Full benefits. There are full benefits that I haven't even figured out yet that are still awaiting us as individuals for you to go find too. Because your full benefit package is better than anything that some employer can give you. See, there's a difference how you see God. Is he an employer or is he your father? See, he's my father, so I get an inheritance. That's my benefits package. It's not something my employer's done because I have to work it out to make myself worthy. No. My worth has nothing and neither does yours on what you've done. Your value is not hinged upon your actions. If it was, you would have never been saved to start with because you were like me, worthless and a sinner and living my life to the best I knew how to screw it up. But see, the full benefit package was for the son in me to be awoken and the daughter and son in you to be awoken. And he's going and calling your name to open your eyes to the full benefits that you have as a child and a son or daughter. Simple investments in this relationship brings eternal benefits. So worship team, come on up. And as my friend that I shared with this week, and I asked some very pointed questions, I asked the same to you. What is your calling? What has God put on your heart to steward? Even if it's just to take care of your cat, which I'm allergic to and I don't like cats because they're independent little fur balls. They're too much like me. But what has he called you to invest in? Thank you, Scott. I appreciate your reading this morning. And if you really, as we get done with this message, if you want to take, give something in the offering, the baskets are back there. Because you know, God takes care of this house. But I want you to know, the eternal package is already yours. It's a done deal. Your song and dance and your actions aren't going to qualify you any more than you were ever qualified before because God qualified you. That's the beauty of this relationship. God invested it all for you to be awoken to the truth of what he has already provided and done for you, despite. And the last question I said to the, my friend is I said, if all of this all goes away, how are you going to respond? And I said, I don't need an answer because I just want you to be aware that life goes on beyond what you see. 
your line in the sand is not God's because God designed every grain of the sand that you just drew a line in. And your line will be erased as the tide of his blessing overcomes it and washes it away. So worship team, there you go. Here? All right. You know, before we go, I just want to invite you to a newness in your relationship. If, you've, if you are viewing, you've never accepted Jesus, or even if you're in this room and you want to just renew that commitment, the only thing he said was, believe. He didn't say jump through the hoops, do all this stuff, and then maybe. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should have everlasting life. That's the only thing you've got to do. So, you've heard the testimonies. You've sang with us this morning. Do you believe? Do you believe? That's all it is. So, believe and be free and share that gospel out there. Just believe. That's all there is. And God engages everything else. Thank you, guys. I love you. For those who have been watching, God bless you. Have a good week. We'll see you next time. And remember, one more Tuesday. That's this Tuesday, Cornerstone Underground, and we'll have our break for the summer. Thank you, guys. Love on each other. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.